You're listening to the weekly partial podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Bishim Israel 5781, 2020. This week's partial is Parshas Vayeshev, and we have the story, the story of Yosef at Tzadik. Yosef, Torah tells us, Vayeshev Yaakov Beretz Meguri Ave Beretz Kenan. Yaakov lived in the land where his father lived, in the land of Canaan. This is in chapter 37, verses 1 and 2. Eilat told us, Yaakov, Yosef, these are the generations of Yaakov, Yosef. Ben Shavas Rishonah, he was 17 years old. Hayoraya es echov bat zayin. Unar es b'nei bilav, es b'nei zilpa, neshe aviv, etc. He was with his brothers and they were all involved in watching the sheep, shepherding the sheep. I'd like to share with you some thoughts from the Medrash about Yosef at Tzaddik. Try to understand the connection between Yosef, the story of Yosef, which we always read during the time of Hanukkah. What is the connection between Yosef and Hanukkah? What is the idea of Hanukkah? What is the essence of the holiday of Hanukkah? What is the essence of what occurred in the times of the Second Temple? How does it connect so importantly to the story of Yosef? So I'd like to read to you from the Medrash. And we will speak a little bit about Mashiach over here, not too much, but it's important to know that that's part of what's going on. The Medrash points out the fact that if we look at these psukim, so we, we're immediately following, when we start speaking about Yosef at Tzadik, the Torah is immediately, has, a, has spoken about immediately before the kings, like we spoke about last week, the kings of Esau, Alufa of his powerful kings, his powerful rulers, his powerful, powerful leaders. So what does it teach us? Whenever we have two concepts placed next to each other in the Torah, so there's never, it's never a coincidence. Here it says, Yaakov sat. Okay. So what is the idea, what is the connection between these Alufim? So, Amr Ablebi Moshul Anapach Shaya Patuach very interesting analogy. Okay, first concept in the Medrash. Hear this well. First concept is that, that we have an analogy to a pechami, is a blacksmith, a person who would take, he had fire in his place, and he would use the fire to shape the different types of metal, tin, usually tin, to create different kinds of vessels. So, this blacksmith, he had a doorway to the Rishus Harabim, to, a, to the town square, so to speak. And his son also had a business right nearby his. His son, however, was not a blacksmith, he was a, a goldsmith. They saw that there was a tremendous amount of piles, piles and piles and piles, bales of hay, bales of... Of Kotzim, it says uh, uh, thorns, thorny branches. Omar, honey, consequent, Chaviyu Salalu, he said, Where are these going to fit? There's all of these branches, there's all of these thorns. Where's it going to go? So the blacksmith and the goldsmith, they were concerned. There was, uh, they, no one could get to their stores, I guess we could say. Because of the fact that there was so much, the whole area was filled with these bundles of, of thorn, thorn branches. So there was a particular wise person, Amar Lai, and he said to him, What are you worried about? This is what you're worried about. All you need is one little spark from, from your blacksmith shop, one little smart spark from the goldsmith shop from your son. And between the two of you, all of this, all of this stuff will just burn away. It'll be gone. It'll be gone. Okay. Kach Kevin Sharavinu Yaakov Esav Aluf of Nesiare. So too, when Yaakov Avinu saw Esav and all of the powerful generations who had come from him, so he was worried. He was worried. Oh my gosh, how will we survive? Just like these two. Uh, the blacksmith and the goldsmith were were nervous when all of the when all of the square was filled with thorns. Amar Hakadosh Baruch Hu, God says to Yaakov, "What are you afraid of? Gates echad mishalcha, v'gates echad mishal bincha." Tamsarvim my son Kulam. 
You don't have to be worried about the offspring of Esav, all of their power, all of their grandeur. You don't have to be worried about it. One little spark from you, one little spark from your son, the goldsmith, which was Yosef at Tzadik, you'll burn them all up. So that's what the verse says, which we quoted previously also, in Ovadia, that speaks about the fact that Yaakov and Yosef are these sparks, or these flames that burn up all of the shallowness, all of the superficiality, all of the many claims of the Umas Ha'olam, of the nations of the world, specifically of Edom of the West. Okay, and that's what happens ultimately in the end of time. And so this Medrash is talking about Yosef and, and Yaakov, and we've spoken about them being Maisa Avis Simil Abonim, that uh, what we see happen in those times is an indicator, is indicative of what's going to happen in the future time. Right? Whatever happened to the Aves is a sign for us of what's going to happen to us. Avram Avinu, Yitzchak Avinu, Yaakov Avinu, they all went down to Gullus, they went down to, to exile in order to come up and they became rich. So, so to Klal Yisrael goes down into Egypt, into different, the different Goliaths, different exiles that we've been through over the last 3,000 years. All of this in order to come out with spiritual wealth or even physical wealth. So that was true about Yaakov, that was true about Yosef. Each of them represented as the Aves Ha'olam, as the forefathers of the, of the Jewish people, as the predecessors of the Jewish people, they represented certain spiritual powers that were imbued into us. So that which occurred to them is going to happen in the future. Yaakov Avinu is afraid of the children of Esau, what's going to be with all of those powerful leaders of Esau, of his brother, of the West. Don't worry, we have Yosef, Yishev Yaakov, we have Yosef. When Yaakov and Yosef come together, when you have these two aspects together, so then we don't have to be af- afraid. Now, what I'd like to point out in the, in the analogy, it's important to understand, Yaakov is referred to as a pechami, as a blacksmith, and Yosef Atzalik is referred to as a goldsmith. It's very interesting. Why is that? Obviously, a blacksmith makes less money. He doesn't have his, his kalim aren't as important. The vessels that he's creating are not as chashuv. Goldsmith, wow. Jewelry, golden pendants, Things that are purchased by rich people it seems to be a much more significant, significant idea. What is the difference? Why is Yaakov referred to in that way as a pechami, as a blacksmith? Why is Yosef referred to as a goldsmith? Okay, before we answer that question, I'd like to read to you from the next section of the Medrash. This is what our sages said. Ela told us Yaakov Yosef. These are the generations of Yaakov Yosef. Yosef is the is the generations, what about everybody else? So Medrash explains, Why did all of the other children, all the other Shvatim, the tribes of Yaakov Avinu, why did they come? Where did they come from? In what merit did they come? They came in the merit of Yosef and because of him. That's what Bazik is saying. It's teaching us that Yosef was the main reason that everyone else existed. Why did Yaakov go to Lavan's house? He expected to marry Rachel. That's why he went there. Everyone was waiting for Yosef to be born. Yosef was the he was the last of the children to be born in the house of Lavan. Right? So he was the final one. He was the final one. He was the of the eleven tribes that were born until then. He was the the roundup. He was the the sweet the I forget the lashon, the language from baseball. He was the sweep up. So he came at the end. So he represents the fact that he comes at the end, and we have to understand this to, at its depth. What does it mean that the something that comes at the end? What is the idea of the thing that comes at the end? But the fact that he came at the end meant that everyone came for him. And now that Yosef was born, that's when, as we know from what we saw in last week's parsha, we see this again in this week's parsha. Il tells us Yaakov Yosef is a, another expression of the fact that Yosef is the one who's the sweep up. He's the one who cleans everything out at the end. And as the Eshet Anacham says, because we can't get involved in this, and I'm not going to get too involved in it either. But it's hinting, the Medrash is hinting to the concept of Mashiach ben Yosef. Mashiach ben Yosef is the sweep-up. He completes the action. 
He's the one who completes everything. All of Kalal Yisrael's told us, all of that which occurred to Kalal Yisrael throughout all of the generations, 3,300 years since Matan Taira, since the Torah was received, everything that's gone on until now will be clarified and completed by Yosef. It will be justified by Mashiach ben Yosef, the Messiah who comes from the seed of Yosef Atzadik, the subject of our Parsha. Okay. Kevin Chanel is Tanishel Oiseha Russia. And who is Yosef? Yosef is the one who balances out the power of Asaph, as we saw. Yosef is at the center. Who's the one who provides for them? Who's the one who brings them down to Egypt? Why did they come down to Egypt? Because of Yosef. Well, who's the one that provides them all of their physical sustenance? Yosef is the one. So he's the center. He's the reason for their existence. He's the reason for their being. He's the one, because of him somehow, we we'll need to see what's so special about Yosef, besides for the Pasha Pshat. So, so therefore, therefore, he's the reason for all of Kalal Yisrael to exist. And he is the, the ultimate, the climax, the, the final answer to all of the problems of Kalal Yisrael as well. Very interesting, the Medrash says, and this is really important because this is going to be the center of the, of the theme that I'd like to give over. Why was the sea split? Kriyas Yamsuf. Kriyas Yamsuf, the sea was split. The sea of reeds was split for Kla Yisrael in what merit? In the merit of Yosef. Pesach says in Tehillim, in Psalm chapter 77, verse 17, it says that the, the water split. The water was fearful. Why? Why? Because God redeemed with His powerful arm the nation of the Jewish people, the children of Yaakov and Yosef. Children of Yaakov and Yosef. The Medrash brings us also the Yardin was split because of Yosef. The Jordan River was split as the Jewish people came in to Israel also because of Yosef. The Geula happens because of Yosef. What does that mean? What is the idea? The final redemption will also occur because of Mashiach ben Yosef. What is the idea? What is the concept that Yosef is somehow the completer of everything? So, and, and also, of course, we're going to try to relate it back to Hanukkah and try to understand well, how does it relate to the idea of what happened in the story of Hanukkah, what is the message for us? The Madness Kahuna here says, Af Hayardin, on this side it says that even the Jordan River split because of Yosef. The verse tells us that the, the sea, Hayom Ra'a Vayonis, the sea saw something and it ran away, right? The water split. The Lashon that it uses is Vayonas, which means to run. Where else do we see that language? We see that language by Yosef Atzadik. In our Parsha, Yosef Atzadik also runs. He runs away from Eshes Potiphar, the woman who is trying to seduce him, to lie with her, to have a forbidden relationship with her. What does Yosef do? He runs away. Vayonas Vayetze He runs away, goes out. Right? And as a result of the fact that Yosef, in the schus of the fact that Yosef ran out, the water, the Yamsuf runs away, runs away from Klai Israel, moves out of the way, lets Klai Israel pass through. Very strange. What is the idea? What is the concept? Because he ran away, therefore the water runs away. It's very uh, ethereal. It's very difficult to understand. What is the concept? What is the essence of this Mamar Chazal, of what our sages are teaching us? And I think that if we think about it clearly, we get to the essence of who Yosef is. We get to the essence of why he's the one who completes things. He's the one who completes the Geula, completes the redemption. His offspring is the one. Yoshua is from the tribe of Ephraim, Joshua. He comes from Ephraim, he comes from Yosef. He's the one who brings the Jewish people into the land of Israel. He completes it. He's the one who completes it. And the water splits by the Jordan River in the schus of Yosef at Tzadik. The water splits by the by by Yamsa because of Yosef. Like, what is the idea? What is the idea of running away? Especially in this context of these psukim, of these verses. I was thinking like this, Gevald, such an awesome idea. 
Look at these Pesukim. And Yosef HaTzadik is faced off with the ultimate challenge. The ultimate challenge. Unbelievable. The most beautiful woman in the world is interested in him. 17-year-old boy. She says to him, sleep with me. This is in chapter 39, verse 7. 8, 9, 10. He refuses. No way. My master, your husband, he trusts me. He trusts me. He put everything in my hands. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the greatest one in this house. There's nothing that I lack. I, I can't touch. There's only one thing I can't touch, and it's you because you're his wife. How can I do this terrible thing and sin to God? How can I do this terrible thing? So, very interesting. His tactic, what's his tactic in trying to get away from the, the, the woman who wants to seduce him? His tactic is, he keeps giving her reasons why he won't be with her. He can't do it. He can't do it. It's terrible. It's an avera. It's a sin. It's a sin against the master who trusts him. It's a sin against God. She keeps trying. She keeps trying and trying and trying. No success. She can't convince him. Finally, she catches him alone in the house. She grabs him by his clothes. He says, sleep with me. He leaves his clothes with her. That's our verses. He runs out and he goes outside. And then the Pasuk tells us an amazing thing. As soon as she sees it, as soon as she sees that he ran away, as soon as she sees that he ran away, then what does she do? Wait, she, all of a sudden she's saying, hey, look, this guy, he tried to, he tried to be honest me, he tried to, to do illicit acts with me. She now starts saying bad things about him. Why, why, is she, why does she give up at this point? Why, is she, why has she given up now? The reason that she's given up now on him is because Vayana Sachutza, he ran out. Why does running out mean that it's all over for her? She's not going to get what she wants. Why does it mean that? Givalt, Givalt, listen to this. This is what Vayanos means. And by the way, notice the word Vayanos, the root of the word is Nes, which is a miracle. What is the idea? He ran out, he ran out. You know, until now it's all talk. Hey, you're still here, right? She says to him, be with me. He says, no, I can't do it. Be with me, be with me. No, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't. It's a sin, it's a sin to your, ma- your husband, it's a sin to God. As long as it's talk, you're still here, it's still possible. It's still possible. When the action, when the words translate into action, and not just action, but extreme action, by he could have just walked out. He ran away from her. He ran, he, he ran in terror from this, this woman who was trying to seduce him. When the words culminate with extreme action, with real action, that's when she knows it's over. That's when she knows that, that she's lost him. There's no chance. He ran out. So what I want to bring out from here is Vayanos. This running represents not just words, not just a desire. What you see happens in the end. You know we're at the end point when it's run. When you see it running, when you see the movement, when you see the action, when you see the real action. You know it's over when the action happens. Vayanos. Right? Who do people respect? Who do people respect? People respect those who accomplish, who bring, who bring things out into action. I just heard from my Rosh Hashiva this week. He gave a whole speech about when somebody's 20 years old, when someone's 21 years old and they have potential, they're brilliant, they're smart. So that's very magical, it's very endearing, it's very, people, people are attracted to that. When a person is 40 years old and they still are just potential, and they haven't brought any of that potential into action. It's, it's not it's not so impressive anymore. Where, where's the action? You haven't you haven't proven anything. It's all just talk. Yosef is someone who we see is not just talk. 
We see that Yosef is somebody who takes action. Vayanas Achutso, he is committed to something. He's committed. He's completely committed to his relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And he takes action. He completes what he says he's going to complete. When he says no, it's a real no. Vayanas Achutso. She knows it's a real no. She's finished. Now she's got to put him in jail. She knows she's never going to have him. That's what Vayanas represents. It represents the completion where we see that it wasn't just talk, it was real. One of the Mephoshim says, you know, what does it mean? Klai didn't have his chus? He asked the question. It's the Anaf Yosef. Why, Yosef, the Jewish people, the reason that the sea split, says the Magish, is because of Yosef at Tzadik. Klai had no chusim of their own. None of the other Shvatim had chusim. Says, says the Anaf Yosef, interesting thing, he says, it didn't have to be that kind of you know, that kind of miracle in order to let Klai Yisrael out of Mitzrayim. They could have been surrounded, all the Mitzrayim could have just died. Hashem does that kind of thing too. Right? Why do they have to go through this, with this awesome nes, this awesome miracle of going through the Yamsuf? That was in the Schuss of a Yosef. That's what he says. What is the idea of that? I think in light of what we're saying, it's an awesome thing. There's no greater way of showing Kalal Yisrael, absolutely, positively, this is it. It's over. You will never return to Mitzrayim. It's all over for you. You are now free. Okay, could, they died, but maybe somebody else will come and run after them. The, the sea splits. The, the waters open up. They walk through dry land. Oh my goodness. There's no going back. Such an awesome miracle. Such an awesome miracle. There's no going back. This is this is not going to be changed. This is not going to be. We're never going to. We're never going to go back to Mitzrayim. We're not going to go back to Egypt. Why? Hayam Rav Hayanos. The water split. The water ran away. Absolute. Just like Yosef Atzadik absolutely showed, he will not ever be with her. The water shows you will not ever go back to Mitzrayim. You'll never ever go back to Egypt. It's done. It's over. The action of the water shows. That kind that level of a miracle shows this is for real. This is the completion. All the talk, I could have spoken, who said 400 years before to Avram Avinu, you know, people are going to go through, they're going to be in an exile, they're going to be strangers in a strange land, they're going to be uh, you know, they're going to be treated poorly and they're going to come out and they're going to be freed forever. That promise was showed at that point when the, when the sea split. Klaisel comes into Eretz Yisrael, the, the water, the Jordan River splits as well, also represents an intense proof that we are here at the end, at the end of this stage. <coughs> Yosef represents this concept, this concept of the commitment being brought into action. That is what we see from Yosef Atzadik, and I would like to say that that is perhaps one of the most fundamental lessons of Hanukkah. What is Hanukkah? Hanukkah was a time when the Jewish people were being were being seduced by the Greek religion, by the by the Hellenists, to to abandon Yiddishkeit, to leave the traditions of our past, the religion of our past, and to take on the ways of our society, to take to be be a member of the society, the current thought. The Jewish people said, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Came the Hashemunayim and said, not just we're not going to do that. They said, we're going to take action. We're going to take action. We're going to fight. We're going to show that we really mean it. It's impossible for us to win. Yosef, maybe even, I mean, think about it. He's running away. How can you get away from him? This is, this is where you work. You're going to run away? It's not going to help you. No, that's a statement. When you run, when you run into battle, even though you're going to lose, you run and you show that you really mean it. This is for real. This isn't just talk. Mila Hashem Eli. Who is for Hashem? Come to me. That's what Matasio said. Right? Who is for Hashem? Come to me. Let's see action. Let's see action. 
And that's where Hashem comes in. That's where they get Siyat Hashemayim. Rav Desvivam, you fought for them. Dan Tesinam, you judged for them. Nakam Tesinam, you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, were the one who took revenge for them. Why? Because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, God is the God of action. Hashem works through people who are interested in accomplishing, who are interested, not just interested in accomplishing, but who are ready to move. Vayonos, the nace. What's a nace? A nace is a flag. What's a flag? A flag is something that you hoist above and it shows us who you are. It represents, this is the Jewish people. Here's your Israeli flag. Here, this is the flag of Beit Shemesh. This is what, this is what we represent. This is who we are. It's action. It's held in front of us. It's movement. That's Hayom Ra'a Vayonos. It was in the schus of Yosef at Tzadik. And it will be in the schus of Mashiach ben Yosef. Someone who understands that what is the essence? What is the essence? Has these aspects. Completion, commitment, not just with words, with action. I'm willing, I'm ready to learn. What's the godless, what's the greatness of the Dafyomi? Person takes action. He's learning every single day. He's committed. He's doing it. He's up early in the morning. There he is every single day. That's the power. It's the action. Someone says they're going to do something and they do it. They accomplish something. They completed something. The Vayanos is the completion. The sea splitting is the completion. The, the Makabim, the ones who recognize that Kodesh Baruch is the one who does it, they get up and they fight in order to rededicate Chanukah to rededicate the Beis Hamikdash so that what is the essence of the Beis Hamikdash it's not just a place where we give lip service to God we walk into the temple and we say God okay here I, I'm sorry I sinned here's my korban here's my sacrifice it's instead of me no that doesn't work we need action we need dedication we need commitment expressed in Vayanos movement running Extreme action, extreme display of commitment. That's who the Maccabim were. That's who Yosef was. And that's the essence of what I believe that we see from these psukim, from these, from this medrash. And that's the essence of what's going to be soon, Amir Hashem, with the advent of Mashiach. I want to bless you. I ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us. That we should be able to take this message to heart. We should recognize that each and every one of us has desires, aspirations, commitments that we need to concretize those aspirations, those commitments, not just with our words, but with our actions. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.